the Acts of the Apostles. When the days of Pentecost were accomplished, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty wind coming, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them parted tongues as it were of fire, and it sat upon every one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with diverse tongues, according as the Holy Ghost gave them to speak. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded in mind, because that every man heard them speak in his own tongue. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, Behold, are not all these that speak Galileans? And how have we heard every man our own tongue wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes, Elamites, and inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews also and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We have heard them speak in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him, and we will make our abode in him. He that loveth me not, keeps not my words, and the word which you have heard is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things have I spoken to you, abiding with you. But the paraclete, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and bring all things to your mind, whatsoever I shall have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, do I give unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, nor let it be afraid. You have heard that I said to you, I go away, and I come again to you. If you loved me, you would indeed be glad, because I go to the Father. For the Father is greater than I, and now I have come, and I have told you before it comes to pass, that when it shall come to pass, you may believe. I will not speak many things with you, for the prince of this world cometh, and in me he has not any thing, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father hath given me commandment, so do I. If you love me, you will keep my word, and my Father and I will come and abide in you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. A little girl loved God deeply, so deeply that God loved her and desired that his eternal word should enter her womb and be given to the world for its salvation. And that little girl we call the Blessed Virgin Mary. And that little girl heard the word that she was to become the mother of God. Quo modo, she said, how might it be done? The Holy Spirit shall overshadow you, and hence the Holy One to be born shall be called Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. It is to her that we turn and ask for the guidance that we might come to know the Spirit's dwelling and how the Spirit breathes in each and every one of us. And so we pray together as her children. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. The word of Almighty God, the word is a consuming fire. 
It divides each and every one of us within ourselves. We cannot compromise with that word that God has given to us because his word is eternal as he is eternal. And because that word is eternal, each and every one of us, to the extent that we will hold onto that word, study that word, meditate upon that word of God, we become eternal too. For each and every one of us possesses a soul. That soul needs the word of Almighty God in order for it to become like unto God. And this is what we have in our life today, a conflict between knowing the word of God and listening to the word of the world. The conflict is this, reason versus emotion. The first act in each and every one of us in the spiritual life is the development of reason, the development of the intellect, understanding. God has made us in such a way that unless we hear a word, we do not change. And that is why when we were in Navishit, we had what we call a spiritual companion. That spiritual companion was to watch us, to see how we acted and so forth, and then to come to us in a way and say, this is what I see that you might be able to improve. His word would make us realize that there is something in each and every one of us that we cannot see. And it is easier for the other individual to give us the word in order that we might change the actions that we had been performing. And it is like that in the spiritual life with Our Lady. At prayer, she is waiting, and she receives the word of Almighty God. And then she says, Cuomodo, how might this take place? She's reasoning. She's saying, look, I have given my entire self over to God as a virgin. How can a virgin then give to God a human nature? And hence the answer. The Holy Spirit shall overshadow you. Reason leads us to faith. The Holy Spirit shall overshadow you, hence the one to be born shall be called Jesus. He shall save his people from their sins. Here we have it. First reasoning. Second, the development of the faith. I believe that God can do what he says he wants to do. And finally, the goal of everyone's faith life to become other Christ. I live no longer I, but rather Christ lives within me. How can Christ live within me if the word of God is not known by me? I end up in the world, and I know that the world is a condemner. So the words of the world condemn. My words then become critical. My heart becomes bitter. And I see people and I know that they're not doing what they should do, so I gripe and complain and I fall back into the trap of the demonic. The Holy Spirit generates love. The Holy Spirit generates the birth of Christ in each and every one of us. But the moment we begin to seek that which is our own, that's the moment in which the Holy Spirit can no longer be operative. And so the first stage of the Holy Ghost in our life is that we begin to be attracted and we enjoy, we love reading the Word of God, reflecting upon God's Holy Word. That is so important for each and every one of us. We cannot in any way, shape, or form make progress apart from the Word which God has uttered. And therefore, the more you make this decision to follow that pattern of our Blessed Mother and to receive God's Word and put it into practice, which means that I am now going to go into the 24 different paths that are called the narrow ways. I will begin to realize that they, the expression of the Word, is in the work. So now look at the 24 ways in which you might enter the kingdom of heaven. Narrow ways, simple ways, but neglected ways. Seven corporal works of mercy. Have you ever heard of them? 
Seven spiritual works of mercy. These works of mercy are 14 spiritual ways of entering the kingdom of heaven. I may be one who is attracted to the young people, and I want to teach the young people the truths of the faith. St. John Bosco, when he was just a little boy, started studying how to be a juggler, how to be a tightrope walker. These were all done to glorify God by proclaiming to his friends and neighbors, whoever would come to his shows, that God loves you and wants you to know his word. I heard the sermon of Father Chisano. I want to give you that sermon. And God gave him this power of intellect to be able to hear a sermon and repeat it word for word. That's why good Father Cafasso, when he saw this little boy and he came up to him after a mission, he said, did you understand any of the points of the preacher today? He says, yes, Father, I understood all of them. Uh, well, why don't you repeat for me the first point? And he didn't expect the boy to say the whole thing, but Johnny came out and he said the whole first point of the good father that was preaching the sermon. Do you know the second point too? Yes, Father. He said the second point. He said the whole sermon. Whose son are you? Margaret Okeana? Margaret Okeana Bosco? Yes. You're Johnny. Johnny, are you going to school? No. Would you like to go to school? Yes. All right, I will begin. And he went to Margaret Okeana and said to her, this boy should be preparing himself for the holy priesthood. And so I will begin teaching him the universal language, the language of Latin. And thus it was that John Bosco began his trek to the great gift that God would give him of the holy priesthood. And he would have a great devotion to our Blessed Mother, the help of Christians. Just as we have the devotion to Our Lady of Good Success. Well, it's interesting that Our Lady of Good Success and Our Lady Help of Christians both have the same question for us. Do you want to conquer this world? Do you know what's going to happen in this world soon? Don Bosco said in this dream, he saw all these ships seeking to destroy the one bark of Peter, ramming it, throwing incendiary bombs. He says, what does that all mean? Our Blessed Mother said to him, there will be a day in the future in which the church shall be as if it were destroyed. It will be completely wiped out. The Holy Father will have to suffer much. In fact, the Holy Father will be murdered. And then a Holy Father will rise up and return the church between these two pillars, the pillar of the Holy Eucharist, the higher pillar, and the pillar of our Blessed Mother, the help of Christians. And when that Pope ties and moors the church to these two pillars, a breeze comes and heals all the wounds of the bark of Peter so that it is now more beautiful than ever. And all those ships that were attacking them, cardinals, bishops, priests, all of these individuals that were attacking the bark of Peter are completely wiped out. And hence the church is restored. Our Lady of Good Success, the prophecy of Our Lady of Good Success, the same, that when our Lord Jesus Christ, there is going to come a time in this age that in which we are living where all the sins will destroy the institutional church because the institutional church has to go the same direction that the master goes. Remember the simple poem, Hast thou no scar on foot or side or hand? I hear thee sung as mighty in the land. I hear them hail your ascending star. Hast thou no scar? Hast thou no wound? Yet I was wounded by the archers, spent, lean me against a tree, and with ravaging beasts that compassed me, I swooned. Hast thou no wound? Hast thou no scar? And yet, as the master, so the disciples shall be, and pierced are the hands and feet that follow me, but thine are whole. Can he have followed far who has no wound, no scar? The church is the mystical body of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit drove our Lord Jesus Christ 
to offer his life on the cross for us. And what did he want? But that this love be enkindled, that the fire continue. The fire is zeal, zeal for the truth. What has happened to the SSPX? It lost the fire. It no longer wishes to combat the world. The world has entered into the church. The world must be combated wherever it enters. It enters into your hearts. The world has to be combated by the truth, the fullness of the truth. And the one who battles best is the one united with our Blessed Mother. Hence, the whole issue of our devotion to our Blessed Mother being the key to conquering this particular aspect of our life, the aspect of the demonic seeking to make us complacent and hence comfortable. This is not a comfortable situation we're in in the world right now. And so you and I are in a battle. And that battle is first of all for our eternal soul. The SSPX has not accepted the challenge. They have gone through 40 years of suffering and difficulty, being put down and so on, and yet they haven't realized that in that they imitated our Lord Jesus Christ and let the fire continue to burn. Instead, now we are marketing. I was looking at the recent expressions of the marketing. Seminarians flocking around a Mercedes Benz, selling tickets, have this Mercedes Benz. Well, traditional Catholics wouldn't have a Mercedes Benz, they'd have a, a Chevy van, 15 passenger van. And that's what's more important, to have kids. So what are we doing? We're losing the zeal of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost challenges us and sits there and says, unless you become like little children and realize at the feet of your mother how to do battle, you will fall. And we have. We have fallen into the attitude that everything has to be our way. And it doesn't. It's God's way. And God will show us in and through our Blessed Mother, the help of Christian, in and through Our Lady of Good Success, that there is a conclusion. And that conclusion is coming to its moment. We have to realize that we have to save our eternal souls. First, the Word of God has to find a place within us. If the Word of God does not find a place within us, you are losing your soul. It is much like the two monks, Pacomius and Palamon. Palamon was said to be most intense on his sufferings and difficulties and studying the Word of God. So Pacomius said, I want to do that. I want to save my soul. So he went out to the desert, and there he was. There was the holy man. And he saw how difficult the life of the holy man was, but he was not turned off by it. Instead, he was on fire by it. So he joined the holy man. And there they were, working together to build a fire. Did they go out to the cities? No. They stayed right in their own little home, their own little place, and there they fought the devil. It has to start here, inside. They fight the devil from within. And both Palamon and Pacomius came to Easter one year. And Palamon said to Pacomius, I want you to prepare a good dinner, a special dinner for the Easter. But Comia spent the whole day making a very special dinner. Came to the point where they're two going to sit down, they prayed and they fasted a moment and then they looked at each other and said, you can have the dinner. I can't touch it because of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and the crucifixion. I just want to make a sacrifice of this dinner. You eat the dinner. Oh, no, 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 I can't eat the dinner. I'm gonna, I want you to eat the dinner. I want to make the sacrifice. So much so were they in love with the fire of God that neither would eat the dinner. And they offered that dinner for the salvation of souls as every action in their life was for the salvation of souls. Think about it. St. Therese, St. John Bosco, St. Francis de Sales, St. Francis of Assisi, Always the same thing, denying oneself. This is what we call acts of repentance. Acts of repentance. 
The word has a work. The work is called penance. The more I am able to deny myself, the more the spirit is able to live within me. That is why we say the simple formula is very clear. You give to the body, you take from the soul. You give to the soul, you take from the body. It's the way it is. So you and I have the opportunity to become a fire for our Lord Jesus Christ if we will just simply say, deny ourselves. It starts with little things and it grows to greater things according to the love that God, the Holy Ghost, inspires within you. We are going to take, in the end of this week, three days to study the growth of Christ's life within us. What are the patterns? What are the principles that we need to learn in order that we might begin to understand, first of all, how to combat the original sin syndrome within everyone's family. It's unique in every one of you. And the fact is that I have to get to the point where I am going to expose that original sin syndrome, forgive that sin, and learn to ask others to forgive me for having to uh, project this sin upon them because I'm doing it all the time. Second, after we understand the original sin syndrome, we have to go to the three stages which every one of us must understand is part and parcel of the spiritual life of Christ growing in us. First, reason. I must establish that reason alone my guide my life. Truth alone. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Spiritus veritatis. He's the spirit of truth. And it's truth that is that which will guide me to do the actions of truth, which are the will now accepting the truth enters into an act of love. So the object of the intellect is truth. The object of the heart is then is the act of love, which is the expression of truth in my life. Then I begin to realize the fruit. So first they call it the root. The root has to be reason. Second is the rod. The rod is our faith. Reason gives light to the faith. Faith gives light to the reason. And there's this constant interchange and you begin to grow in the depth and profundity of the mystery of God. And then you give the fruit. You become like Christ. And this was what the SSPX was for us. The expression of Christ in our world. It was the expression of Christ to me, and I felt like I'm home. That's what happened to me. I came there and I heard them praying for a good holy priest, praying for the increase of religious and priestly vocations, praying and praying, and all the people were praying. And I said, I'm home. It's Christ. Christ opens us up by means of the Holy Father, Archbishop Lefebvre, to understand in our world today, we must hold on to the truth. We must not compromise with it. When we begin to compromise with the devil, we become the slaves of the devil. When we combat the devil, with what? The restrainer. In Scripture, the restrainer is the blood of Christ. Without that blood, no one of us would have the power because each and every one of us would be captured by sin. Without the shedding of his blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. With the shedding of the blood of the Lamb of God, we have been forgiven. And because we have been forgiven, we can now go out with fire and say, there is a pathway that leads to heaven. There's a pathway that leads us to happiness. You want to be happy. Every one of us wants to be eternally happy. We will never achieve it unless we first of all do the purgation. The purgation of that which is sinful in our life. Therefore, we must know it. We must understand how it blinds us. And then we must attack it by means of a deeper love for the love, the love expressed by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the fruit is always the proof. If the fruit is Christ, we know that the reason was correct and that the faith was embellished because of that reason. Now, look at the crisis we're in. We are no longer able to reason with our brother priests. 
What happens? No, they attack us in three ways. First, you're a son of a gun. Yeah, I know. I'm the worst priest there is. I can, I've been kicked out of this place and that place and the other place. And I, I'm sorry. I, that's just the way. Please forgive me for my faults and failings, but that is part and parcel of the situation. So humble thyself. Okay, but that's the first thing they want to do is, you are bad. Therefore, nobody should follow you who are bad. We should follow those who are saints. Yes, okay. Second, silence. Oh, we just won't talk. Silence. Well, that would be a good if the silence was meditation upon and contemplation of the word of God. But it's silence in referring to the truth that should be exposed. It's silence in regards to, are we keeping on the track that Archbishop Lefebvre gave us for these times in which we are living? If they're not following Archbishop Lefebvre, then we must do what St. Paul did with St. Peter. I resist you to your face. We have to have guts. I'll tell you why you don't have guts and why there are the problems here in this particular area. We could have stood up and said, all the families, we are going to stand up for the truths that Archbishop Lefebvre has presented to us. We will not compromise with anything that he has said. Therefore, we will not move in any way, shape, or form to being under a heretical Rome, a modernist Rome. We carry on doing the work that we have to do, saving the souls that we have to save, we will not compromise with this truth, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that our good Archbishop Lefebvre gave us the directions. Therefore, when all of a sudden we find out that this person is eliminated, why? Because he came to a mass from a priest who said, I resist you to your face. Therefore, this family is eliminated from the school. Therefore, this family, you can no longer serve Mass because you're not here for us at any particular time. We're dictating. It was not that way when I came to the Pius X Society. It was not that way. It was, Father, we welcome you. We were going to support you. In fact, the retreat that I had from Father Pfluger, the first points that he gave us was how this society was for the priests. And the priests would save the sacrament for the people. And thus you had the order established, the priority. First, give glory to God because the greatest glory we can give to God is being priests to offer the sacrifice of his son. It's the greatest glory. The second, that these priests are Marian priests. They know that our Blessed Mother is going to crush the serpent's head. Therefore, we're in a battle. We recognize the battle. And then the third thing is this that it flows down into your hearts and souls that you want to do the battle too. And therefore you said, let's withdraw ourselves from the Novus Ordo and let's do battle for the faith. Now we wash our hands of the battle and now we resist those who are holding the line that they always held. Listen to the sermon of uh, Bishop Tissier of January 12th. Listen to it. And he put seven points down there. That's our program. The seven points that he put down there is our program. I talked to Father Kimball and said, what about this sermon of the Bishop Tissier? I'm asking him in the spirit. Would you preach this sermon? No. Why not? They would kick me out. Fear. Perfect love casts out fear. The Holy Spirit came to cast out fear, came to give us the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which the world cannot give. What kind of peace is it that Jesus Christ gives to you? The peace of the truth. The peace knowing that these things that we are preaching to you are eternal. They're eternal. And the more you interiorize them, the more you shall be prepared for the kingdom of heaven. And the more you fall into that human respect, fall into that sin that St. John Bosco says is the first on the way to hell. Human respect. What do they think of me? You know, will they kick me out of school? Well, doggone it. 
if we had all the parents standing up and saying, no, this is the truth. We will withdraw our children. You'll have no school. You have no parishioners. And then they will say, oh my gosh, what have we done? Let us return to our former love. What are they going to study? What's the next conference on the apocalypse? On the apocalypse. Well, in the apocalypse, there's this one phrase to the church of Laodicea. Return to your former love. Remember what it was that brought you into this holiness. Remember what the Lamb of God did for you. Remember the power and the passion you used to have. Remember how you used to go out to missions and go anywhere in the country and you didn't worry about if this bishop said anything or you just went and you did the work. The Spirit demands the work. And therefore, we have now a new battle, but it's the same. It just means that now we've lost some of the troops that should be with us. And we go out and we begin to proclaim the same thing that Archbishop Lefebvre gave to us and that the church has given to us from all times. So reason, that's the root. Faith, that's the rod. The fruit finally is you're becoming more like Christ, that you're saving your souls. And that ultimately is the greatest power that we have, is individual souls becoming holy. Individual souls coming back to their, the fire of our Lord Jesus Christ and saying, this is what I want for all eternity. Because our God is a consuming fire. And you cannot enter in consuming fire unless you are on fire too. Like we have our good woodman who puts his fire together. And if you take out one of those kindling things and you don't have it inside the fire, what happens? It dies. You've got to have fire united with fire. I can't have this man not united with us in fire and flame and then say that everything's fine. No. We lost the fire. We lost the zeal. And we have to regain that zeal by becoming holier ourselves. Then we pray for the good fathers at BVM. We pray for the conversion, that they just look at the facts. We're not doing anything else but asking them, Look at the facts. And if Bishop Filet has not been truthful, and we know there's a great problem here, then we correct the man and say, you cannot take us all down this road to Rome, heretical Rome, because then we lose the spirit. We lose the fire that sanctifies our people and that has brought us to where we are. And you cannot go around and say that the Holy Father is saying all the things that you want us to say, he took in lesbians and, and congratulated them on their loving affairs. And yet, to the woman who had her, was having her eighth child, she, he said that you shouldn't propagate like rabbits. I mean, give me a break here. These are the things that we have to say, fight against. Sure, the Novus Ordo has the positions that should be occupied by traditional Catholic priests. They have them. They have the power positions. But that isn't the power of the Christ. The power of the Christ is the power of the cross, which foolishness is for us the greatest wisdom. So we're right in the particular position which God wants us to be, suffering on a cross. Now, on the cross, did Christ speak in a subdued manner, quiet manner, or did he cry out in a magna voce, a great voice, Father, forgive them, they know not what they're doing. This is the issue. We are crying out for those. The whole SSPX, it should be our brothers in this battle, we're crying out, Father, forgive them, they know not what they're doing. If they knew what they were doing, they'd be condemned. But our Lord Jesus Christ has raised up a remnant, has raised up a small number. And the consequence is, little by little, the truth is coming out like Father King of Britain, who said very clearly, there is a tacit agreement 
There is a tacit agreement. There doesn't need to be a signed agreement. There's a tacit agreement. Look at Argentina. It doesn't happen overnight, those type of things. They happen after there's preparation. Everyone knows that. We do the same thing in America. If I want this chapel to have a uh, non-profit status, I go through the rigmarole of writing out the forms and doing those type of things and then presenting them and then they're approved. Right? Well, don't tell me it just was a nice thing. After 40 years, 40 years, and then you just get it now? Well, it's kind of funny. These are the funny things that are happening. The things that they won't explain, and they go into silent mode. Okay? And the last mode is just denigration. It's called ad hominem. You just attack the person because you is a person. Everybody of us knows that. That's why we go to confession, right? We attack people with our doggone tongues, and therefore we go to confession and say, I'm sorry, I'm going to try to stop. Here, they just say, let's keep on doing it, because the more mud you sling, the more people will say, get away from that person, right? Same yesterday, today, and forever. Satan is working the same as he's always worked, and that is why we need to have time for you to understand how to develop your own spiritual life and where you're at spiritually. Do you know whether or not you're in the purgative state, the illuminative state, or the unitive state? If you're in the unitive state, then you should be moving to the path of holiness that God wants for you. But if we're still back here in the purgative state, we're wasting time. And it takes time to prepare you takes time to give you the knowledge that you need to know in order that your spiritual life may not just stagnate. And that's what's happened now. We have stagnation in the Pious Ten Society. Actually, we have regression. Non progredi, regredi est. If they're not going forward with the program of fighting for Christ, they're going backwards. And the same for you. If you're not fighting for the life of Christ within your families, you're going backwards. We've got to fight. We've got to stand up. We've got to say what we have to say, not in a cruel manner, but in a kindly, humble manner. This is the way it is. Christ has given us the directions. These directions are what we must follow to become holy. And no fight. No battle. We battle the Word of God and we're going to lose. If we live and follow the Word of God, the work of God will produce the fruit, which is Christ-likeness. And that gives us the peace that this world cannot give. Because in him I live and move and have my being and I just simply give him everything for his glory. And when he is in charge, then everything will work out the way he wants it. And I will just be happy. Because I'm not manipulating. I'm not falling back into the illuminative state where I'm sitting there holding on to my own will and saying, I'm going to manipulate these people to do what I want them to do. No. I want you to be holy. What are we in holy orders for? To order your gifts in a holy manner. You all have gifts of holiness. You all have gifts of sanctity. And it has to be brought out that's what the priest must do. Bring it out in confession. Bring it out in the conferences. Bring it out so that you begin to say, I can take the next step. I'm not ignorant. I know what God wants of me. Huh? So today, the Holy Spirit, Our Lady, help of Christians, is this day as well. Our Lord unites the Holy Spirit and our Blessed Mother to give birth. And hopefully she gives birth to a fire inside of your hearts. A fire that says, I want to be holy. I want to be the saint God wants me to be. I want to resist those things that are taking our church back down into the hell that Satan wants it to be in. But I'm going to resist as best I can by becoming the saint that God asks of me in whatever way he decides. Let us ask this, for we know the old gift that God has given to us of that simple little poem that St. Therese, the great St. Therese, uh, Teresa of Avila, used to remark all the time, Lord, you have no hands but my hands to do your work today. You have no feet but my feet to lead others in your way. You have no tongue but my tongue to tell men and women how you lived and died. And you have no help but my help 
to bring others to your side. Let the fire of Christ inflame each and every one of your hearts and bring Christ to others that you might bring more and more the truth of the Holy Spirit into their lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.